Okay. Hey, how are you today? This is Josh Peck and Patrick, and you're at the Sustainable Business Podcast. And boy, am I excited today. Today, we have a guest who I have been trying to get on my podcast since I first met him, oh, a couple of years ago. And for whatever reason, it never happened. But now we're here to say it's Perry Marshall. And I got to tell you something, Perry is probably one of the smartest thinkers I have ever run across. Every time I go to one of his programs, I leave energized and a little bit confused. I have to be, admit that um, because I'm not nearly as smart as he is. But at any rate, we're going to have an interesting conversation today. And so since we have Perry waiting very patiently, I'm going to shut up and bring him in. Hey, Perry, how are you today? I'm great. It's great to be here. And it's cold afternoon in Chicago, but it's warm in my house and we're having a great conversation. So it's All great. Right. Great to be I, here. I'm, I'm really excited to have you. Um, I've been looking forward to this for a while. Now, there's two things I want to talk about today. Um, one is you're known as Mr. 8020, but what you really should be known as Mr. 8020 of 8020. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Because that's where the action really is. Mm -hmm. And I actually understand that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the second thing I want to talk about and see if I can finally get clear on it is what you call the network effect. So where do we want to start on 80-20 and 80-20 or network effects? Yeah, let's, let's talk about network effect second and let's talk about 80-20 first. So um, when, when I was a sales manager at a software company, um, I read some book and the book said that 80% of your sales comes from 20% of your customers and 20% of your sales comes from the other 80%. I thought, huh, is that really true? And I went to QuickBooks and I printed out this thing and I took a calculator and I just like, you know, top to bottom. And I, and yeah, when I got about 20% through the customer list sorted from the top down, it's like, I'll be darned. That is, that's, yeah, that's like 80% of what we took in last month. And well, that's interesting. And then like, that was it. And I didn't, there's two things that I did not understand until later. The first thing that I didn't understand was that 80-20 is not just this interesting business rule of thumb that happens to be true about like wealth in countries and, and customers at, at companies. It's almost just about everywhere, okay? It's 80% it's of the dirt on your carpet and uh, is on 20% of the carpet in your living room because there's this path that people walk to go through it. And 80% of the traffic is on 20% of the roads and, and 80% of the baby rabbits come from 20% of the rabbit moms and, and it's sizes of craters on the moon and, and, and it's almost every spreadsheet in, in your business. And, and it's almost everything in, in a Google account, if you're advertising on Google, it's everywhere because it's a law of nature. Um, there's a law that says, 80-20 is the name of it. It says that cause and effect are very, very unequal, okay? So it's how rivers flow and it's population of countries. It's all over the place. And once you start to notice it, you can't unnotice it. Well, so that's the first thing that I didn't understand. Um, and any, anytime something is universal, then you have to pay a great deal of attention to it because you'll, you'll find all kinds of interesting ways all over the place where you can use it. So that's the first thing I didn't understand. The second thing that I didn't understand is that it's fractal. Okay, now that's a weird word and we're already getting really deep. What, what is fractal? Fractal means a pattern inside a pattern inside a pattern inside a pattern. So like think of a big boulder and there's some rain and a crack and it freezes and then uh, that rock falls off and uh, onto the ground. Well, that rock has cracks and water gets in those cracks and then a piece of sand falls on the ground and then the sand has cracks and then the sand splits. Pattern inside a pattern inside a pattern. A tree, right? 
there's an overall shape of the tree, but you zoom in, zoom in, zoom in down to the branches and the leaves and the veins in the leaves, you see that same branching pattern over and over again. 80-20 is like that. There's an 80-20 inside every 80-20. And so if you're looking to make more money, if you're working to not work as hard, if you're looking to prioritize your time better, if you're looking to make certain customers more profitable, um, if you're looking to figure out which customers you should get rid of, then you need to start paying a great deal of attention to this because it means there's levers inside of levers inside of levers. And so, so let, let's, let's step through this. Um, now, I, I want to tell you a story that, that'll kind of give you some context, especially for, for marketing people, but, but really anybody. So, so I got this friend, John Paul Mendoza. John dropped out of high school at age 17 in Denver. He hitchhiked to Las Vegas and he became a professional gambler. Uh, and his mom was thrilled about this. <laughs> I'm sure she was. <laughs> she, she went to mass every morning at six o'clock just to, you know, work out her anxiety. John's in Vegas and he's, le he's playing poker for a living. And after a few weeks, he's like, yeah, this is harder than I thought it was going to be. And he goes to a gambling bookstore and he runs into this guy named Rob who runs a professional gambling ring. And they start talking. And John goes, well, could you teach me what you do? Well, for a percentage of your winnings, I could teach you what I do. And so they make a deal and they shake on it. And Rob says, jump in the Jeep, John. We're going for a drive. So they're driving down the highway. John says, so how do I win more poker games? And Rob says, the way you play, you win poker games is you play people who are going to lose. And, <laughs> and those people are called marks. Uh, like you want the guy who got $5,000 of inheritance money from his grandma and he flew in from Wichita, Kansas and he landed in lost wages. And like, you want to play poker with that guy. And he goes, okay, well, where do I find more marks? And he goes, here, I'll show you. And he pulls into a parking lot of a strip club and they walk into the strip club and there's all these, shall we say, distractions in the strip club. And there's loud rock music and there's all these people drinking and there's all this stuff going on and it's noisy and they sit down at the table and Rob always carried a sawed off shotgun with him everywhere he went inside his jacket and he pulls out his sawed off shotgun and he holds it under the table and then he opens the chamber and then he slams it shut so it goes and uh, you know there's, there's some biker guys over in the corner and they're like hey who made that noise and john's looking at this and he's kind of alarmed and the the owner of the club comes over and he's like hey what's going on over here and rob goes nothing's going on over here just teaching the lad a lesson don't worry about us john did you see those biker dudes who turned around when they heard that noise? And John goes, yeah. And he goes, don't play poker with them. They're not marks. Play poker with everybody else. Well, that's what in my book, 8020 Sales and Marketing, I call racking the shotgun. And everything you do in business or in marketing is racking the shotgun. So you send an email and most people don't open it, but some people do, that's racking the shotgun. Uh, some people click on the link and some people don't, that's racking the shotgun. Some people go to the website and sign up for the podcast or the webinar or to get a quote or they buy something, any of those things, that's racking the shotgun. And, and so, Coming back to 80-20, when you rack the shotgun, you separate the 80 from the 20. In the case of this strip club full of bikers, 20% of those people in that club are really badass dudes and you do not want to mess with them. And 80% are marks. And so 
you divide one group from the other, right? And then whatever you've got left, there's the top 20% of the top 20%. So, so if we send an email and 20% of the people open it, 20% of those people are going to click on the link. And that's 4%. And 80% of 80% of what you're going to get is going to come from the 4% who opened the link. And so this is true in customer groups. This is true in product lines. So you have the top 20% of the top 20% produces 80% of the 80%. In other words, 4% produces 64%. And then you can take it another step further and 1% produces 50%. So 1% of the people have 50% of the money. 1% of the customers write 50% of the checks. 1% of the employees create 50% of the problems. It's everywhere. And when I learned this and understood it, it completely revolutionized my world. It changed the way I saw everything in business. And, and, and so that's like, that's what 80-20 squared is. There's 80-20 squared, there's 80-20 cubed, and it actually just keeps going. So you have 8 billion people in the world. Well, 20% of the 8 billion have 80% of the money. 1.6 billion of those people have 80% of the money. And you can keep taking the top 20% of the top 20% of the top 20% until you get to Jeff Bezos. And it'll be accurate. It's a law of nature. It's like a law of physics. It's like gravity. So if I'm thinking about running my business and I have never played around with 80, 20, um, besides my customer base, I probably want to be 80, 20, everything in my business. Yes. 20% of my processes bring 80% of my results. Yes. And actually, 20% yes. of that 20% gives me 95% of my results. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not paying to that 20% of the 20%, somebody else is going to, and they're going to come and they're going to eat my lunch. That's right. That's right. And, um, and so you start doing it on everything. So you, you did something here that I – I'm very happy about you used 80 20 as a verb. You said 80 20 ing. I am 80 20 ing my business. What does that mean? It means you figure out what is the 1% or the 5% that, that generates almost all of the results. So, so, you know, what is the, you know, I've got 20 employees, but actually one of them is as productive as 10 of them put together. And it's almost a certainty that this will be the case. So what do you do to make that person more productive? You know, there's almost certainly stuff that they just shouldn't have to do anymore. You know, why is the salesperson um, chasing around uh, late payments? Like, can we have like somebody else do that? Right. Um, and, and this is everywhere. And most, most people just sort of assume that, most businesses are fairly well run and most industries are reasonably well organized. <laughs> no, no. My, most, my experience, by the way, is the exact opposite. No, it's 80% wasteful. It's 80% ineffective. And, and like some of that you have to do, but most of it you don't. Well, the interesting thing is, um, I'm, I'm assuming you're familiar with agile technologies. Yeah. Otherwise known as Scrum. Mm-hmm. And when you start applying Scrum or Agile technologies to your business, using 80-20 on the 80-20, the results are just unbelievably magical. And you can do it in every single industry mm -hmm. that exists. I'm actually yeah. on, this, I'm on this path right now where I'm trying to get Agile consultants to stop looking at software and start looking at the wider world. because. <laughs> Because what they could do would be worth way more to the wider world than software, and they would get paid a whole lot more. <laughs> the value would be a whole lot more. And it's sort of like talking to accountants about getting rid of hourly billing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, that makes perfect sense. Well, yeah, well, there, you're, you're exactly right. And so, yes, there's levers inside of levers inside of levers. 
And there's no end to it. Like it just keeps going and going because 80, 20 is fractal. There's a pattern inside a pattern, inside a pattern, inside a pattern. So you can just keep going and you can find, you know, smaller and smaller levers that swing bigger and bigger doors. And um, it's like, I've just, I've been doing this 80, 20 stuff for 15 years and it, it never ceases to be. You know, you, you're the master. I mean, by the way, if anybody's listening and you get a chance to go on the Perry seminars, you really need to take him up on it because A, he's a really good speaker and B, the information will keep you busy for about four or five years afterwards. <laughs> Absolutely. We will, we will we'll feed all kinds of happy juice and information and knowledge into your brain and then you can profit from it. Yeah. Yes. And, and by the way, full disclosure, I've been to a bunch of his programs and I'm a subscriber to one of your programs. I don't know what the name of it is, but I am. Um, so let's go into network effect because we've got eight or nine minutes left and that's another big deal. So what do we need to know about network effect? So there's been a huge shift from the 20th to the 21st century. Um, and it is, it has changed the fundamental definitions of competitive advantage. And so, so there's, there's 20th century competitive advantages and there's 21st century competitive advantages. They're quite different. 20th century competitive advantages are things like manufacturing capacity and distribution channels and um, TV and radio and mines and legislation and you know, all these kinds of things that they create barriers to entry for other companies. You know, General Motors has a competitive advantage because not everybody can just stick a pencil behind their ear and build a billion dollar automotive plant, right? Yeah, that's pretty true. Okay, so, so that's, those are 20th century competitive advantages. The biggest 21st century competitive advantage is something that, only existed in a limited way in the 20th century, and it's called network effect. And, and network effect is when more sellers on eBay attracts more buyers on eBay, which attracts more sellers on eBay, which attracts more buyers on eBay, which attracts more sellers. And you end up with, well, if you're doing auction sites in the, in the manner that eBay does, you would never be able to create a second eBay and ever get it off the ground because none of the, there's no sellers to attract the buyers and there's no buyers to attract the sellers. And so, and so eBay keeps them both. And um, Bob Metcalf, who is a friend of mine, he's the inventor of ethernet. He coined the term network effect, and he said, the value of a network is equal to the number of members squared. So if eBay has 10 million users and it goes to 20 million, the value of eBay is 4x, not 2x. Because the bigger it gets, the harder it is to compete with it. Well, Uber runs on network effect because drivers. Uh, writers attract drivers, which lowers the wait time, which attracts drivers, which attracts writers, which lowers the wait time, which attracts writers, which attracts drivers. And it's this virtuous circle. Facebook works on network effect and Instagram does and Snapchat does and Google does. Um, and, and once a network has gotten going, and it's the biggest in its niche, it's almost impossible to take down. And it, it's almost impossible, and frankly, to even compete with. Can you imagine starting a ride-sharing service now? No, but our friends at Lyft did it. <laughs> well, Lyft, Lyft did it, but, but so think about it. You've got, you've got Uber and Lyft, yep. and they're both viable. Yep. But Compare that, and there's really only two. I mean, there, you can, there's taxi, there's the taxi yeah, app. five or six. In, I see a whole bunch of airports, but it's only Uber and Lyft that count. Right, right. Okay. There, and and over, only in Uber and Lyft that are all, literally all over the world, right? Right. Okay. 
Now compare that to the automotive in industry, which is based on 20th century. How many automotive manufacturers can you think of? Well, there's Daihatsu and there's Hyundai and there's Suzuki and there's you know, Ford and Chrysler and right. There's a long list of automotives, right? Because it's 20, because automotive is a 20th century industry, but Uber is a 21st century industry. And so th this is the thing that I talk to my customer at a high strategic level. When I have high-end clients, when I have pe people in coaching that have significant businesses or startups with high potential, what I'm always counseling to do, them to do is look at literally a dozen different aspects of network effect and design their business to take advantage of it because it makes co co companies, excuse me, insanely valuable, insanely. So let me ask you something. I'm working on something which actually you can give me some advice on or just your comment on. Um, I'm in an industry of consulting and financial planning, which is typically done on a one-to-one -one basis. Mm -hmm. And both industries seem to be sort of stuck there. Although there are some people in coaching who have figured out one-to-many and they are mm -hmm. a magnitude more successful than the one-to-one -one folks. I mean, you're one of those folks. You have lots of one-to-many programs. Yes, I do. So if you're in business and you're working on one-to-one, and you go one to many, even though your price is much lower per unit you're dealing with, the value of what you can receive from that is so significantly better, bigger, that if you're in any advice business of any sort, your challenge is to go from one to one to one to many. Mm. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Well, I think many times that's true. And, and, and one thing that I want to say about that is it also increases the perceived value of your one-to-one. -one. Okay, yes. so most people in a, in a knowledge expertise business are going to do one-to-one, -one, but how about that be the, just the top of your pyramid? You know, that, see, that's where 80-20 of 80-20 of 80-20 comes in. Now, if you have a, a membership program, that's your first 80-20. Mm -hmm. Your next 80-20 might be a mastermind program. Your next 80-20 might be one-on-one -on -one coaching. Or you're probably going to have an 80-20 between that. So basically, mm -hmm. you're talking about, you know, 1% of your tribe is going to want to pay you stupid money to work with them one-on-one. -on -one. Right. And it's not even stupid money, but it's smart money for them because they can get the value out of it, right? And so right. You, want, you want to match the, what you charge to the value that somebody can get. You know, if, you know there's, there's, a, there's some of our programs, we turn people away because it's like, you shouldn't be writing me a check for $20,000 at this point in your business. Right. We should be helping you at a one thousand dollar kind of level. Here, you you go over here and do this. And when you're, you know, there there are people I, I won't take their money, right? And then they get they get to a certain point. It's like okay, no problem. You know, I have other clients where you know they're paying us six figure consulting fees, and and so you know, and and I just think um, you have a much better relationship with your customers when you can sensibly make those matches and you even have, I think, a uh, higher satisfaction in the long run because there's a lot of people, they're like, they're running around with their, their umbilical cord in their hand looking for somewhere to plug it in. And there's a lot of people, they'll just take their money. Like when two years later, they're regretting, wow, you know, I shouldn't have given that person $35,000. Yeah, I've, I've done that. I've done that more than once in my life. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> so, yeah. so Perry, yeah. unfortunately, we are out of time. And uh, well, it's went by fast. Um, I would love to have people contact you. So how do they do that? Um, go to sell8020.com. It'll take you right to our website where I sell 8020 sales and marketing for a penny plus shipping. And you get a few extra videos that you wouldn't get if you bought it on Amazon. And you can watch how our sales choreography works. I think it's very instructive. You can see, you know, 
look at what happens what, after you buy the book. Like, well, what happens after that? What happens after that? What happens after that? How do we communicate with you via email? What, what, what kind of messaging do we put out there? I think there's a lot that you can learn from that. And um, yeah, I think, I think uh, it, the book will change your life. You'll, you'll yeah, never it's a great, see. It's a great, it's a great book. And, and what, was that, what was that website again? Sell 8020? Sell8020.com. Okay, that, cool. That'll go right to our 8020 book page and you can look around and see the other stuff, but definitely, definitely read 8020 sales and marketing. Cool. I also have an offer for you too. I wrote my first book this year. You did? I did. Yeah. It's called Sustainable, a fable about creating a personally and economically sustainable business. Oh. Um, I am sort of of the opinion that many people like you may not like read how to books. So I wrote a novel. And it's about a very dysfunctional family. And you, there's parts of it I hope you recognize yourself in. Not the whole thing. Because all business owners I know are sort of dysfunctional at some level, including me. I'm dysfunctional. I'll, and, I'll claim and, that. Uh, it's kind of fun. Um, and it's easy to get. Just go to www.sustainablethebook.com. And I also have some bonuses there. You get a free 20-minute coaching call with me. And I wrote a 38-page how-to guide because in the book, we just go through the stuff. And instead of having you figure it out, I gave you a, a how-to step-by-step. So this is Josh Patrick. You're with Perry Marshall. You're at the Sustainable Business. Thanks a lot for stopping by. I hope to see you back here really soon.